call to order. Today is June 24th and it is 8.54 p.m. Thank you for everybody who's held on to watch this meeting. Uh, next item is roll call. All other persons are present with uh, Mr. Katna and Mr. Zerflu appearing by phone or Zoom. Our first item of business is consider the adoption and action of the Finance and Property Committee at its meeting held today, June 24th. Mr. Koth. Thank you, Your Honor. Property and Finance Committee meeting, um, Property and Finance Committee met at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, June 24th. All members were present. A list of others attending is on file with the clerk's office. Um, first business item was consider a request from the street department to approve proposals from truck vendors to replace a quad axle dump truck that is considered a total loss due to an accident. Motion by Colt, seconded by Kellogg to approve a proposal from I-State Trucking to purchase a 2020 Western Star quad axle uh, truck with tough track suspension, 505 HP Allison automatic, 46,000 pound rear suspension, lift tailgate for $174,500. Motion carried three eyes, zero nays. Then number three was consider a request from Alderperson Coth to suspend the city's open container ordinance on Thursdays through Saturdays from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. from July 2nd, 2020 uh, through September 5, 2020 to allow the public to be outside the bars and restaurants to socially distance. This would be limited to beer and wine only, no hard liquor in plastic and aluminum containers only. Motion by Kubishak, seconded by Coth to hold the open container and proposed extension of alcohol premises ordinance. Discussion over to the regular scheduled meeting on July 7th. Motion carried. It says eight ayes should be three ayes and zero nays. Item number four was consider a request from door 212 LLC doing business as door 212 lead shipment agent located at 212 West Grand Avenue for a temporary extension of their alcohol license premises to include entryway and sidewalk directly in front of their premises and street closure, street closure and suspension of their open container ordinance on West Grand Avenue between 2nd Avenue and 3rd Avenue, including sidewalks but not including intersections on Saturday, July 4th, 2020 from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. to allow the public to socially distance for the 4th of July. It was motioned by Coth, seconded by Kellogg to approve a temporary extension of Door 212's alcohol license premises to include their entryway from their front door to their sidewalk in the in the front of their door and to suspend the open container ordinance on the north sidewalk of West Grand Avenue from 3rd Avenue South to 2nd Avenue South with both the premise extension and open container suspension occurring on Saturday, July 4th, 2020 from 4 p.m. to midnight. The applicant will be responsible There's a part that was cut off there. I'll see if I can find it in the email. Okay, the applicant will be responsible for placing barricades and signing the area as far as the open suspension container area goes. The motion carried, three ayes, zero nays. Item number five was consider a request from Central Rapids LLC doing business as La Taqueria, Luis Ramon uh, Melendez agent for the, uh, located at 1345 8th Street South for a Class B beer and Class B liquor license. Motion by Coth, seconded by Kellogg to approve the uh, request from Central, Wisconsin, Central Rapids LLC doing business as La Taqueria, Luis Ramon Melendez agent located at 1345 A Street South for a Class B beer and Class B liquor license. Motion carried, three ayes, zero nays. This item will be considered um, at the July Common Council meeting. Uh, item number six was considered a request from the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Com Commerce Incorporated, Angelina Whitehead, president, uh, located at 1120 Lincoln Street for a temporary Class B beer license for a business after hours event to be held at Alexander Field. 3620 1st Street South on Monday, July 27th, 2020 from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Motion by Coth, seconded by Kellogg to approve a Class B beer 
license for a business after hours event to be held at Alexander Field, 3620 First Street South on Monday, July 27th, 2020, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Motion carried three ayes, zero nays. Item number seven was adjournment. It was motioned by Kubishak, second by Kellogg to adjourn. Motion carried three ayes, zero nays, and the meeting adjourned at 8.37 p.m. I will pause here to see if anyone would like any items held out of the report. To my, to my understanding, item number five is being reported to the council tonight, but no official action will be taken on it till the July Common Council meeting. But I was uh, uh, pausing here to see if anyone else wanted any other items held out of, of the report. All right. Um, I will make a motion to approve the report as presented. We have a motion by Mr. Cole, seconded by Mr. Kellogg. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. Alderperson Zerflu, how do you vote? I vote aye. Alderperson Catnall, how do you vote? Aye. Motion carried, eight ayes, zero nays. Thank you very much. Leads us to our next item of business, which is discuss and consider taking action on the opening of the Aquatic Center at the Wisconsin Rapids Recre Recreation Complex and admi admission fees and restrictions. Guess I'm not sure where we want to I'd like to be in the queue, please. Um, Jake would like to speak to her. Got it. So I guess um, I could probably start uh, on Monday night, Park and Rec discussed this item and are bringing forth a 4-4 a four -four tie with um, two counsel. So basically they're, it's a split recommendation or a split thought. Um, and I guess I further felt that given that this was a timely issue, that this is an issue that the city council should discuss and decide as a body, instead of me just making a decision. Um, I guess at this point, we might as well open it up if anybody wants to speak. Mr. Katnaw, I know, has already expressed an interest. Is there a speaking order? Thank you, oh. Mr. Mayor. Sounds I would good. just like to start with the the large amount of community outreach I've gotten during these days, we've decided to postpone this decision. Dozens of residents have reached out. Uh, honestly, it'll be a shame if we don't listen to them, the ones who are the taxpayers who paid for this on what they want to do with this. I have heard no feedback on not opening the park. Uh, it's continuous feedback on people having choice. I thought there was a great video uh, put up by Joe Terry and the Public Works Department recently regarding the precautions that we will have in place when we do open and what we will do if there is a spike in the COVID-19 cases. I would like to remind everyone that the private businesses are open. Uh, several of them are shoulder to shoulder. The community cases in Wood County of are 37. We have 72,000 residents and that's in a four month stretch. And those include cases up in Marshfield and other parts of the county that will not be allowed, or not, not allowed, but at this time not allowed in the aquatic center. Um, mental health is also a disease. This is spiking. 
And this is spiking due to people being isolated from COVID. And I would just like to remind everyone that we need to leave this up to choice to our residents. This is not saying that people need to go to the aquatic center, but it's giving them the option to. And it's one of the safest options that they can do right now in this pandemic. So those are my thoughts. I, I voiced them in previous medium meetings, but I wanted to put them out there again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Katna. Uh, Mr. Benjamin. <laughs> Yes, I'd like to um, echo what um, Mr. Katnoff said as well. Um, and I, there's, I've received several feedbacks. I'd like to read just a couple real quickly, um, just some snippets of some constituents, um, some letters I've received. Um, here's one that says, we would like you to vote to open the aquatic center and allow citizens to decide for themselves if they will come. As grad parents, we will buy a family pass for ourselves and our children's family. We are willing to accept the risk inherent in any activity and will enjoy the aqua this aquatic center, which is a wonderful addition to this community. Please do not delay opening this park. And then I have another one. I won't, I'll read the, the majority of it. It's, um, I just wanted to take a quick moment to ask you to advocate for the opening of the new aquatic center at Wednesday's tiebreaker. As a mother of three kids under three and a lifelong resident of Wisconsin Rapids, I can't tell you how excited my family and I are about the prospect of having somewhere safe to, and fun to go this summer. With COVID-19 impacting every single aspect of our daily lives, doing something normal, such as going swimming on a hot day, would be not only fun, but good for the mental health of my children and quite frankly, myself. <laughs> we have been driven by and we have, excuse me, we have driven by and admired the building process of the center almost daily all winter long and I can't imagine the looks on my kids face when I tell them we can what we can go no longer go swimming or go down the big blue and green slides they see from their car window with everything else going on in the world how could we take away the one thing that is good about this summer I feel that there are many ways to safely open the aquatic center limiting daily ticket sales socially distancing practices and cleaning and in my opinion, limiting ticket sales to only residents of Wisconsin Rapids, Nakusa, and Port Edwards. There are many people who have worked very hard to see this aquatic center come to life and not to open it, to have it sit idle for another year would be very sad indeed. Thank you for your time. So there's just a couple examples of what the comments of the, I've received from citizens. Um, and again, there have been, um, there are 30, as of this morning, there were 35 positive cases in Wood County, and as like Jake said, that also covers a good part of the county, not Wisconsin Rapids. Um, there are also, and out of those, and from those 35 cases, um, there are 4,247 negative tests. Um, we've had one new case since Monday, and um, we, we seem to be pretty isolated from this. I understand it's um, different from place to place, but Again, we talked about this at the last meeting. I can continue to think this is one of the safer environments, particularly the fact that it does happen in chlorinated water. Um, with that being said, um, those are my thoughts, and I fully support this. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Rayon. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, You've heard me speak before, and I'm going to really try to keep it short this evening, um, but I will s start with one of the the four to four vo vote uh, in park and rec te and technically, and uh, I missed the chance at that, uh, and I, when I was driving home after the meeting, at, uh, how I missed it is that the motion failed on the tie vote. So actually, as it says there, the motion did fail, and actually the business, we should have ended the business that evening. So. Uh, because the motion was made to, to open, and it, with the tie, the motion didn't pass. That's why it says it failed, and so that was, so that's the recommendation from the Park and Rec. So there is a split view on this. Obviously, people that have got heard from favorable ones who really want it open, uh, they knew who to call. I got a couple of the same letters you just read, though, too, but I have heard from those opposed to it. There's a concern to it, yeah, and we talk about there's only, it's a very few, and I hope it stays a very few. 
open or closed. But all it takes is one or two or whatever. And so people have to practice the safety part of it. It's not just a, and there are procedures, recommendations, whatever, to, guidelines to go by, but to make sure that they're followed if this is opened. It's not the, you know, it's, gonna, it's not going to be a big playground in there. There are guidelines. There is social distancing. You may not know it if you look at it now because it's chair to chair. So it's not set up for social distancing. And one thing that really, I guess, gets uh, me, uh, to an extent anyway, is when people say to use choice. Well, I hope you just keep in mind there's also those that are using a choice not to go in because they're watching out for themselves and others. And so the choice goes both ways and those that are going in are the ones taking probably the bigger risk than those that are staying on the outside. And that's where you're going to run into the possibly the community uh, transfer of, of it if it would take place. So yes, there is the choice to, to do that. But there's also those that are respecting their right. They're looking at protecting their safety. So you're looking at from the other side too. That's why there is a division on this and that's why you did see a four to four vote on it. Because it's not 90, it's not 90%, 90 to 10. There are a lot of people that want to use it, no doubt about it. Um, it's uh, and not just on the park and rec. There, there's a, there's nervous people in the county in that because the guidelines are going to have to be followed strictly. And I fear by some is that um, basically those that are there operating the facility are young people. And they're going to have to make a decision on what to do in case something would happen. So keep in mind, it's not just a well run, or it's going to be well run, that's for sure. But um, there are people that are going to have to make decisions through the course of this, and they're, they're going to have to then enforce those decisions. And it's kids of ours that are working there, that are running the show. So just keep all of that in mind too. And uh, I, I, where I've supported for a long time to have an aquatic center, and it's a beautiful facility. Finally, after a long time, Rapids finally got there. It took until we lost our last pool, till the rest of the people were finally willing to step up. And uh, but with that, because of the pandemic that's still going on, I just have a fear that we're letting our guard down. People are willing to jump right back in. And there's only so far, you got, you got to take the baby steps back in. I'm not saying to keep everything, you shut things down forever. But we got, got to watch how we open back up. And you got to remember in the summertime, you're going to have more people traveling through and this and that. And yeah, it says who can, you, who can use it or not. But those people are going to be coming into contact with people that are traveling from around the country. 
and you and people thought with the heat they would knock it out maybe well you're seeing what's happening through the south and southwest total spike you're seeing what's hap what took place in New York three months ago and people don't wear masks We're, we're, we're asking for it. I hope it doesn't come. I really do. I really hope it doesn't come here. Because there's no way we're equipped to handle anything like that. So with that, uh, Your Honor, I, 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 I sure know how this is going to go, so I'm not going to drag it out with that, so I'll just quit and we move on and get to a vote eventually here. Thank you, Mr. Rayo. Uh, Mr. Pemke. Thank you. So I, like everybody else, had a number of phone calls. Um, most of them were people that were interested in having the pool. But I did have a number of phone calls with people that had questions, and I'm hoping maybe, Joe, would it be appropriate? Because I have a, kind of a long list. Um, sorry, but... Send them my way. Okay, so I kind of try to lump these things in categories. I, I guess the first question is, um, it sounds like there's been a decision to made to, to isolate geographically the people that can and can't come in. Um, how are we going to how are we going to verify addresses? Do we have a plan for that? So, as staff, we're we're looking at one of two different ways. Um, one way is I've asked our GIS department to develop a a, a web app where you just type in the address and uh, he can compare off of tax ID numbers and get a green light if it's one of the communities that's in the area. Um, I'll elaborate on that a little bit. Since, since I sent you the memo, um, Mayor Blazer has talked to me and has requested three other uh, local communities be included, and that be the town of Cranmore, the, uh, let's see, Cranmore, a Vesper, and there's another town, Hanson, town of Hanson. Um, so we can do it that way. Um, I know our staff would prefer using zip code. The software that we have already would allow for that. The challenge we have with that is with zip code. Um, Nakusa zip code, for example, extends all the way into Adams County. And um, we're, we're trying to minimize a lot of the um, transient type activity and when you get into town of Rome there's a lot of homes that are that's not their permanent home so um, but those would be the two ways to do it we will either use a zip code with some type of a, a, a way to differentiate those or we would use uh, an application where simply the staff types in the address and and we'll get a green light or red light on the screen and that's how we would uh, manage that by the staff at that location. So are we going to take their word for it? Are we going to ask for a driver's license, some form of ID? Well, we will be asking for um, name and address information so that everyone signs in. Um, we do want to be responsible that if there is uh, somebody that develops COVID-19 and they are traced back to the aquatic center, we want to be able to provide information of every patron who is on site that day so whether it's a season pass holder or a day pass holder, we'll be gathering that address information from everybody and documenting that. So it, it, it's going to delay admissions if we're allowed to open. It'll delay admissions while we gather that information. But, um, you know, and we're, we're counting on people being honest about it. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll try to verify addresses. But essentially, if, if someone gives us, gives us a, an address and we punch it in and take a look at it. If it's something strange, we'll know. You know, we, we also have City Viewer. We also have our own GIS app. We can punch in the address and you can see exactly where that home is. And if it's not a home or it's a vacant parcel or something like that, um, you know, we can exclude people that way. Okay. Um, I guess we're, we're, we're entering the facility. Um, you've got, the way I understand it, you, you've got probably high school age kids possibly college age kids doing the admissions right um, do we have the floor marked off for, for the distancing do we have the shields up for them and are these kids ex 
what's expected of these kids. If I come in and I say I'm coming from outside of the area, I've got a busload of kids here. Sure. Are, are we going to have somebody on staff that's going to come and help these kids through this? You bet. Are they going to be there the entire time the pool is open? or? So we normally will not have um, one of our full-time city staff on premise the whole time the pool is open. Seven days a week as long as it's open. Right. Okay. We, we will not. We, will, we typically will not have, like Mary or myself, or we have other things we have to do. So, so we have, um, we have our, our two manager and assistant manager, chief lifeguards. Um, you know, they're adults, college-age students. Um, we have dealt with, uh, you know, the city of Wisconsin Rapids has had pools for generations. I've, I have operated a pool in Port Edwards for uh, 18 and a half years, and there are oftentimes situations where you've got to ask somebody to leave. And so we've trained our staff how to do that. And they know how to ask politely. They also know that once they've asked politely, the police department's a phone call away. And the expectation is there. Um, you know, that there's... Besides the staff, you got the manager on site, and they also have the phone number of one of us, so that if there's a need for a full-time staff person to uh, to be on site, we're here working. Um, we have an on-call rotation for our our maintenance staff. We have a few select people that are trained to uh, check on that pool, and then a few select staff that are around to uh, respond if there's a uh, a need, whether it's support for the lifeguard staff or if it's a mechanical issue. So we may not have somebody on site, but we have full-time staff available to, to work with them. And, and we would whether this situation, the COVID situation, was in play or not. Because things happen at pools. People sometimes misbehave or ask to leave. It, it happens all the time. And so we're prepared for it. Um, and just like we've been prepared for it any other year. Um, so we've come up with a number, for, uh, a capacity number, which is 400. 400. How did we come to that number? And how are we going to, how are you going to track that number? You've got people sure. coming in, probably people going out. Are you going to have yep. somebody at the door counting? What's the plan? Yeah, so we are going to have people counting. Um, the, the admission staff will have a counter. And that as people come and go, they'll be adding as people come in, subtracted from that counter as people go. If we get to 400, we're going to have to ask people that we're, we're at our limit. Um, that, that facility is designed to have 822 people in the water. So if you've, if you've been on site, the deck is substantial. Um, we're proposing half of that, and we've run that past uh, the Wood County Health Department, and they were supportive of that number. Um, you know, we had talked about different numbers. The challenge we have is with uh, the, the budget that we have proposed for this facility. Um, does depend on concession sales. You know, if you run at a, a, a very small patron loading on a regular basis, there is a significant overhead to run all the pumps and, and the chemicals. Um, bather loading plays a little bit into it. Um, but for the most part, those are fixed costs, and if you don't have patrons at the pool, um, we're, we're spending money that we don't necessarily have to spend. So we looked at it, felt that uh, we could still operate at half capacity um, effectively. This is a new facility, so we can't say that with absolute certainty, um, but we're we're certain, I'm, I'm certain that uh, half capacity will be sufficient to be financially responsible and that that gives us extra distance and space um, to also practice social distancing to the best extent possible. Okay, I guess the last thing I have is there's been a discussion about selling these season passes. At this sure. point, are we still recommending that we do season passes, it being that we could be open this week and close now? Yes. So, so I do... I do recommend that we sell season passes. I've talked to some of our staff that um, are concerned about, well, if we're open for a week and something happens and we close, uh, then what? And I guess my, my position on that is let's cross that bridge when we get there. That 
if if someone has a family, um, you know, if you're if you go there six or eight times with a family of three or four, you you've more than paid for your family pass, and we're going to have a lot of people that are going to come to that facility if we open. They'll be there. They'll be there five, six days a week. Um, and we see that. We've seen that, you know, for generations that you'll have people that will come once or twice a week. You'll have people that are there every day. And you'll have some people that will show up just to check it out. Um, we intend to let people know that, look, if you're going to do a season pass, at this time it's non-refundable, just like it would be any other year. And if for some reason we have to close in two weeks or we close early, um, I would suggest at that point we bring that to the Parks Commission or to the City Council and make a decision whether or not we're going to, um, you know, offer a refund, um, extend that pass until the, you know, the next year if that's what they wish. Uh, but at this time there's such a potential for savings. Uh, there's also benefits. Um, for pass holders. That structure was set up by the Parks Commission um, so that there's a discount for some of the deck type rentals if you hold a season pass. And, um, and that was the desire of the, of the Parks Commission. And that was one thing when they did talk the other day, um, they have never suggested changing that structure. And in fact, it was discussed uh, they didn't take any formal action one way or the other, but it was discussed at the meeting on Monday, and uh, and certainly the consensus was to to support the structure that they had developed. Um, so with that, I do recommend maintaining the the season pass. And uh, like I said, if we if we have an issue, we cross that bridge when we get there. I guess just the last thing is is. So I know there were some issues with some architectural stuff, and I guess is the pool is the pool ready to open? Physically, is the pool ready to open? So we did have some issues where the uh, the, the plans were submitted to the state before construction. They were reviewed and approved and stamped approved, and uh, and and the types of features that that you're asking the question about are features that existed in a number of other pools in the state. Um, the site inspector interpreted the rules differently than the plan review staff at the state. And there were some things that needed to change in order to meet their expectations. Um, we did have several discussions with the state through our, through our consultant and um, felt that we aren't going to get anywhere. Their, their position is their position, and, and we've had to make some changes. Um, those changes include some minor changes in the deck itself, where um, the, the one interpretation was just fine, and the way that the inspector interpreted it, some of the landscaping and sod is too close to the edge of the deck. And so this week, the contractor did add um, some concrete and actually did a real nice job making it look like it belongs there and not like an afterthought. Um, so that said, by Friday, we expect that the state inspector will approve the facility so that we can open. Um, I will be meeting tomorrow with the Wood County Health Department. We've submitted those permit applications. Uh, they are not allowed to approve our county permit until after the state approves the state permit. But they have agreed um, an effort to expedite because initially our, our goal was to open this coming Monday on the 29th uh, to do their review of the, of the site and, and potentially give a, a nod if, if it was okay. And, uh, and once we got the, the state approval, we wouldn't have to further delay for another county inspection. Um, that said, though, with these, with these issues, um, our recommendation is to push back the start, the opening date, till July 6th. 
to just give us a little bit of cushion to make sure that those things are taken care of, all of our permits are in place, and there have been some challenges um, with uh, using some of the, the software and, and, um, and our staff getting up to speed and then being able to uh, sufficiently train the youth staff on how to properly use it. Um, so, so at the commission level on Monday, um, the staff's request is to delay the opening date till July 6th. If we are to open, um, I, I, I don't want to wait much longer than that because for the last month and a half we've been running pumps, chemically treating, um, and getting ready. And again, if we wait much longer, those costs are, are substantial. Um, and, and we're spending money to right now have a pool that's empty. Um, there's some necessity in that to, to be prepared and test everything. Um, I, I would like to mention we did have a, call it a wet run on Tuesday. We had some of the lifeguards. Um, we had a few children of staff um, test our lifeguards. Uh, we had we had them do uh, things that they weren't supposed to do. We also wanted them to evaluate to see um, how everything was working. You know if they enjoyed the experience. And uh, and I will say that a number of the smaller kids they only had an hour. Some of the smaller kids were crying when they left because they did not want to leave. And I had one youngster um, just express that it's 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 too much fun. And uh, so, so that was really heartwarming, and it was, uh, you know, it was neat to see, you know, after we've been without a pool for a few years, um, you, you do have a tradition with staff, where staff generally starts at a low level, and then they grow um, and work at the pool for a few years, and they mentor their, their friends, um, you know, and we lost some of that while we haven't had a pool for a few years. Um, but I, I was down there the whole time and, and uh, was extremely pleased at, uh, you know, at the work that our staff has done to prepare these, um, these young employees. Uh, the, the guards were, were very responsible when they were seeing things that weren't being done correctly. They were pointing them out. Uh, they were being polite. They didn't know some of the kids that were there either. Um, so it, it was... Uh, I guess I'm, I'm kind of making a long story of it, but we, we're ready. So uh, we're, we're ready to go. Okay. Uh, that's all I got for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bemke. Uh, Mr. Koth. As long as you're up there, Joe, I got a couple questions for you. Um, with the geo restriction, um, every, you've said your word is penny on the honesty system of people just being honest about where they live, but there's certain things where, like you said, with the Nakusa zip code extending into Rome or people that have since moved out of the area and still have Wisconsin Rapids on their driver's license and they now live in Wausau or wherever, are we going to have any type of penalty for somebody that gets caught trying to enter the pool under false pretenses or fraudulent pretenses by providing false information? Well, he'd certainly be asked to leave. Um, they would not be welcome back. And I guess it would be up to the city and the Parks Commission to decide if they'd ever be welcome back. You know, that would be, a, I think, a gross violation of, of, of the rules to try to enter the premise improperly. Um, it, it, it would not be a citable offense, at least at this point, because we don't have an ordinance to that effect. Um, but, but we would, you know, we would expect people to be honest and, and uh, you know, we would plan on doing some spot checks as we, we have thousands of uh, people already in our recreation database um, who have already participated in some way, shape, or form. And so many of the people that use the facility, we, we already have record of where they live. Um, you know, people do move, but you know, we we're not starting from ground zero on 
you know, on, on that. Okay. Next, next question I have for you. Since patrons coming into the pool are going to be asked about their residency and provide information, so if there's something that happens, the city can contact them. Um, typically, this day and age when not all in all cases, but in most cases when something bad happens, it's generally the person will sometimes blame somebody else of, well, this is your fault because you guys decided it was safe to open this up and now I went to your facility and I got sick. Um, in that screening process to enter the pool, are we gonna have some sort of uh, thing saying that you're using this pool at your own risk, basically a, a waiver form or? So we, so we don't have a waiver for anyone to sign. Um, and, and after talking to Attorney Schill, and she can uh, further explain if, if needed, I don't think we need to. We do have signs posted. They're, they're currently on the desk. They've been prepared, um, you know, letting people know the precautions that we're expecting and that they're not allowed to use the facility, um, you know, and, and to take safety precautions and practice safe social distancing. Um, you know, when they're at the facility. But as far as, uh, you know, as, as far as pointing the finger at the city and holding blame, um, you know, it, it would be pretty difficult for anyone to say, this is where I, with, without a doubt, this is where I contracted something um, during a worldwide pandemic. So, we take all of this extremely seriously. Um, you know, if we would discover that there was somebody at the facility that were infected, we would follow the, uh, the original Badger bounce back plan for closing down the facility, disinfecting the facility. And then after uh, a 24 hour period after that, potentially reopening the facility. Um, we would also take into account the, the current condition of uh, community spread and work closely with the Wood County Health Department uh, to determine if that's, you know, if, it, if it's time to close it. Uh, you know, if, if we're seeing uh, any type of dramatic increase. For the safety of ourselves, the safety of our employees, and for the safety of our patrons and, and the community, um, you know, we, we owe it to them in order for, for the community to be able to trust us. You know, we. I mentioned this at the Parks Commission meeting. Um, the staff, we, we toiled with this decision. Um, there's no, there's probably no right answer here. Probably no matter what we do, someone could say it's wrong. But I firmly believe that this facility in a chlorinated environment with the reductions that we're proposing the, the distancing that we're proposing, but, but most importantly, the, the geo restrictions that we're proposing. That indeed, this is gonna be probably one of the safer facilities for anyone to be at um, during the summer. You know, the chlorinated pool water, uh, CDC, if you go on the CDC website, it, it effectively destroys the virus. So um, I really, really truly believe that that this is the right thing to do for our community. That's all the questions I have for you, Joe. And um, just looking at the board here, I know <clears throat> eventually we're going to have to vote and we need a motion to do that. And all motions have to be made affirmative. So um, just so we can get to that part eventually here, I will make a motion to um, open the aquatic center um, with the recommendations uh, proposed by Public Works Director Joe Terry on July 6th, 2020. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Koth, uh, Mr. Vediman, beat you on the second there, Mr. Katnaw. Um, and Mr. Bemke. Uh, thank you, I'd, I'd like to ask that we recognize Chris Bartek, please. Thank you, Alderman uh, Bemke. Uh, I'm Chris Bartek, live at 3441 15th Street South 
South and Wisconsin Rapids, and I serve as a member uh, commissioner on the Park and Rec Committee. And I just wanted to, to stop down and share. Um, I did vote in favor of opening the Aquatic Center, and I wanted to, to share why uh, I support the opening of the, the water park. Um, I, I believe that we've built a beautiful facility in our community, and a lot of people are looking forward to seeing it open. I understand that it's a very difficult decision that we need to make in the midst of a COVID pandemic. Um, I believe the facility can be open safely. As Joe mentioned, uh, all the um, things that they put in place. Um, I have a background in safety. I work as a professional safety, and I understand that there are risks out there, but I believe the city staff and the committees have taken the time to assess the risks and are putting uh, these restrictions and other um, things in place to be able to open the pool safely. Um, many of those things Joe mentioned, and I do believe that people are thinking about safety even when they're going out, whether they're go going to Walmart or they're um, going to a restaurant. I do believe that people are thinking about safety um, as they go and, and move about living their lives. Um, in my group of friends and neighbors, um, there's a lot of optimism about the facility opening. I believe opening this f facility gives the community members who have supported the Aquatic Center through um, paying their taxes, the choice to enjoy the facility, and those that are not comfortable to do so have that right as well. The community and staff have done a great job putting the guidelines in place that will provide a safe place for families to enjoy some summer fun. Right now, safety is everybody's priority. And I believe your vote tonight is about empowering the community to make their own choice whether to attend uh, the facility or not. Um, but I do believe it's a very safe um, place where people can go and have some summer fun. And so I just wanted to share that. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kellogg. I just would like to have some clarification. Um, it was mentioned that we're having the entrance of a no number of participants, 400, and you mentioned 800. Uh, would be in the water and so forth, and that's why we chose 400. Um, that excludes adults. I think you have grandparents and adults coming. I'm assuming that the 400 is just the children. No, it no, includes no. the adults too. We're proposing that there will not be more than 400 patrons at the facility at any one time. So that includes adults, chaperones, um, it, it does not include staff, but that we would not have, that we would maximum, set a maximum limit of 400 patrons on the premise. See, I, I guess I have a concern about that because you got the uh, kiddie pool and so forth. You're going to have a parent there that will want to be there to watch their kids. Yes. And that takes up one spot. One, you, I mean, at Howe School, I had 600 students there. I mean, it's... To me, <laughs> it'd be good to, to hit restrict it to 400 children and, uh, and adults watching their children would be able to come in and not be part of that 400 count. Um, they're not in the pool. They'll be on this most likely in a chair or on the side watching their children. I don't know. I just, I, I just wanted to bring that up because... Um, 400, it's just not many people and then adults. That's just a concern I have. So, so I would just suggest that in our effort to try to maintain that social distancing to the greatest extent possible, um, that's the number that the county health department, when we proposed that, they, they were comfortable with that. Um, and I think if you, we'll confirm this if we do open, but I, I think if you were to visit the pool, you're going to find the majority of the of the patrons are going to be of the ages 12 and up who won't necessarily have an adult supervising them that the uh, <clears throat> excuse me the number of adults at the pool will be fairly minimal that that maybe aren't swimming um, but this facility um, supplies concessions things like that too and so there's things for them to do and enjoy 
while they're supervising their, you know, their children as well. So I, I don't think by setting a limit of 400, um, we're going to have a situation where, you know, you've got anywhere probably even near 10% of the people at the pool as non-swimmers. I, I, I think it'll be close to 90% or more of, of the people that go will actually be participating in the pool. Well, I'd like to see it pass. So, I mean, if it's 400, it's 400. But I'd like to have the park and rec, once you have it open and once you see the participants and you have a sense of it, it seems to be, I'd like to have the park and rec or the common council reconsider the numbers with regard to adults and children, like 400 children and um, adults would be maybe 50. You know. so we'll, we'll be able to track that because um, it'd be a little more difficult with the family pass. Yeah. But if, if somebody does do uh, day use, we do have a separate rate for non-swimmer. Uh, we can also ask our, our head guard that oversees the activities, you know, to do a, a count and check and see, well, how, how many people in street clothes are there at any, any one given time? Um, yeah, and report that, back. We can certainly do that. Yeah, I, I would like to see that. Thank you. Mr. Koth? Yeah, just a couple more questions popped in here. I um, kind of lost track of where everything's at with the YMC. Is their their pool operational yet? It is. I, I don't know the extent that, you know, what their restrictions are at this point. Um, I know they have restrictions in place, and, and there may be others here in the room this evening that, uh, probably know a little bit more about the, you know, the, the, the wise operation than, than I do, but they are open. Okay, thank you. Oops. Go ahead, Mr. Veneman. Yeah, sorry. Um, they actually, I don't know, they're in phase two now. They had a number that they live at the upstairs and the downstairs, but I've never seen, I'm not sure the exact amount in the pool, I go, of course, I go at 5 in the morning sometimes, so <laughs> probably not a lot of people in the pool. But when I was there in the afternoon, there's probably, most I've ever seen in the pool at one time is probably maybe 20. So they spread it out pretty good. I don't know what if they've limited the pool, but they do. What they're doing on for the gym part, they track where which area you're going. So you say, I'm going to the pool, going to the going to the upstairs so there you are tracking who comes and what part of the facility they're using but I've never seen more than maybe 20 people in the pool so far I can speak to that if, if I may go ahead Mr. Katna thank you so my son and I have actually been to their aquatic center inside they do limit the amount of people they have removed any inside seating and you must bring your own towel but they are fully operational otherwise Thank you. Does anyone have anything further? I guess seeing nothing further, uh, if you want to get ready to vote, uh, please cast your ballots. Alderperson Katna, how do you vote? Aye. Alderperson Zerflu, how do you vote? That's an aye for Zerflu. Okay. Motion carried, seven ayes, one nay. Thank you very much. Um, our next item for discussion is regarding mass gatherings in public events in public parks and other public spaces. Uh, so I, I guess we have this on the agenda to have you guys uh, have the council discuss it and make a decision on, you know, events in parks, um, even, you know, lunch by the river scheduled, um, rafter games, anything where there is potentially a mass gathering of people in public areas. I'll speak it. Go ahead, Mr. Catnow. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so I've read over the Rafters plan for opening back up. I think it's great. Uh, I think it would be very hypocritical to allow other private businesses open 
but not the rafters because they operate at a public park. And we also just approved opening another public park. So uh, if it's specific to them or any, I mean, the private businesses are open. Again, I'll just repeat that. So I don't think we should disallow others to not open. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. Anyone else have any thoughts? Anybody? Uh, Zerbley would just like to echo what all person can all just said. Thank you, Mr. Zerflu. Anyone have an interest in making a motion to allow events? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to allow mass gatherings and public events in public parks and other public spaces. Uh, that's Mr. Catnall. We have a motion. I'll by, second. Had a motion by Mr. Katna, seconded by Mr. Veneman. He be yeah. Uh, Mr. Kubitschek. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do we have a recommendation from the health department, from the county health department on this? Or is this something that we should even be voting on without the recommendation from the county health department? Well, Yeah, so I guess specifically if um, they ha the county health department has guidelines on, on their website, um, they are, that's where they're putting their guidelines um, and recommendations. Also, uh, I guess specifically with the rafters, the rafters have worked, uh, as Mr. Catnall pointed out, they have worked out a plan, which the health department approved. Um, but otherwise, it's just general guidelines issued by by the health department. They don't have any orders out right now. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'd just like to point out that by statute, the health department can uh, basically shut anything down anyway. So I think the um, authority is, uh, is given to them. So for us, it would just be on literally the city level. Thank you, Mr. Zerflu. Uh, Mr. Aon. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I get. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'd even be voting on here. Mass gathering. Um, how many is a mass gathering? I mean, Matt, that that can fill up a park, wall to wall. And not a demonstration or a protest, just to get together. Um, so it's just to, to me, there's not, nothing really to vote on other than I guess if you vote on it and prove it, then there's there's no limit on anything. And yet we just got done talking about limits on the pool and the rafters have limits and that and. Uh, to me, I guess what this is just left wide open for any number of people to assemble anywhere to to do whatever. Maybe just a giant picnic, but just just it's a. To me, as I'd read this, if that this is how the motion would go. You can, it's mass gathering. That's a heck of a lot of people. And I've been in them a few times. So, and I'm not talking really about, and I'm not talking about uh, if somebody would be protesters or something like that. Just a mass gathering, just a group getting together. You know, how big a group or parties or, you know, somebody renting out a park. To, um, are we going to encourage social distancing or, or not? We are at our facilities, such as the ballpark, the aquatic center, and that. So, to me, this just leaves a wide open end on it. 
result. Thank you, Mr. Kubitschek. Yeah, I guess, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for, I guess for clarification, do we have a prohibition right now? Um, I mean, it, I, from my understanding with what this, and without having any backup documentation where this came from, I, and I have got no idea what the deal was with the rafters. I didn't read that in the newspaper, but I mean, it. from what the Supreme Court said is the state can't impose it, so it falls back on local government control. And if the county themselves doesn't have a restriction on us within the county, and it's our, our decision, but I mean, did, I don't remember making a, any um, prohibition on this, uh, you know, aside from the, giving the mayor the authority to make decisions in an emergency type of situation, specifically for COVID-19 purposes or whatever. But I mean, is this kind of more like a straw poll or is this, I, I guess I don't I know where the, why we would need to allow mass gatherings if they were never prohibited in the first place. Well, this is, this is whether you wanted to weigh in on restricting mass gatherings. Correct. So if you want, if somebody wants to have right, a special event this summer, order, or because persons had expressed dissatisfaction, which is not about not being involved in decisions regarding the rafters, or maybe that there were mass gat, you know, what would be our position regarding mass gatherings in terms of okaying special events and so on. And I think the mayor then, um, the mayor and I talked, and that would then the, the council can decide if that's an issue. Um, that a council member has brought up, then then you can decide that. And if if you if someone believes that there should be a limit, that's certainly within our prerogative uh, to address that on public public property. So um, I think that's why it's on the agenda. Uh, but in the event, uh, but in the absence of a motion to somehow limit it, then yes, it's there are there are no limits. Okay. Uh, so then. Is it, and I don't want to out anybody type of thing, but I mean, is it something that a council member feels strongly that we need to restrict it, you know, it, 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 on here? Because I mean, it, it, <laughs> it, it's almost, it, it's not the same, but it's almost like voting on a negative type of a thing, in my opinion, you know, just the concept, because what, unless there's a specific reason, you know, why, why are we talking about it? You know, I mean, if, if, if someone, if someone is like, I think that we need to be more restrictive. Let's have it specific for that reason, because it, it, it just seems too generic, I guess. I, I, I'm not. Well, it's, it, we can't. Um, well, I guess there are, there are reasons that it is more generic versus targeted at a specific uh, contract that we might have with someone that, that um, has sporting events, I guess. Um, we don't want to interfere with that contract. The only, the, that's why Park and Rec doesn't have any say over it. That's why, so, but in, because we are in an emergency declaration, the council and or the mayor could make restrictions on those, on those types of gatherings and then that would, that would supersede any lease or contract we have with any, anyone. So I think that's why it's on there and additionally, an elder person did express um, concern over that, and I think that's why it was placed on the agenda. And I, so it's certainly within your power to limit that, and I think that's what the discussion is is about. And I agree, and it can also further expand if I want to have an event next month. And you know, do I plan an event, or do I know now that that's probably something that may be prohibited. Trying to be a little proactive there too. But if, if you have no desire to change anything, I'm fine with that too. I guess the, the reason why I'm kind of looking at this because it, we, we've given you the power to be able to change things and with this and I'm not going to pre pretend to be an expert there's a guy I listened to Dr. Michael Osterholm who's uh, the director of public health for University of Minnesota and he's been in there since 1974 I was born in 1980 so he's been doing his job for a lot longer I've been listening to him he's talking about we're, we're all going to get affected 
you know, so it, 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 some, what happens today is going to be totally different than what happens in two weeks. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I like the concept about being proactive, but the, the, the concern about, you know, being in a pandemic type of a thing is do we, you can't, you, you want to predict and you want to prepare, but, you know, you, you got to roll with the punches what you're given. So I, I guess, I mean, it, I don't care. I'll go along with whatever the the deal is, but I just, like I said, I just don't understand. I'm, I'm not getting this. So, I, yeah, I'm I, I'm good with saying yes or no, but I think in this this option, if the if this council feels that we're not comfortable with this type of event, I, I think it's easy to decide that now. I do agree that you know two weeks from now we could have a whole different look and. And maybe if you were fine with mass gatherings, I'm okay in two weeks shutting it down should we see a, a very large spike or, or there's some instances. So but I'm just trying to get, get the council to kind of decide, hey, we're in favor of this or no, we're not in favor of this. I guess where I'm kind of going with that is that hey, would it be prudent for this council to actually approve something if we're not restricting it because status quo is current status quo. So now if we approve the fact that we're not restricting and someone uses that information to plan a wedding two months from now, even though you plan a wedding a year ahead or whatever, but you plan a mass gathering and then now in three weeks the conditions have completely changed and either council or mayor or whoever we deem now you can't do it and then someone says, hey, based on your um, motion mayor but based on the council action on, on the special council meeting you guys said that you were going to have it wide open and now you're changing the rules well do we even want to change the rules to make it look like we've made a decision i mean because if we don't make a decision then status quo is going to be status quo that's where i mean because again we could throw everything out the window of planning because of um what's happening with this but if we vote in the affirmative to allow the status quo, we're just affirming the status quo. Uh, but if there is a concern, that's what I'm asking. Who is the one that, that and not, again, I don't want to out anybody, but who is the one that wants to restrict it? Let's talk about that. But if there isn't a specific, I, I, I don't think that it warrants any action being taken. I'll move on in the speaking order and we can uh, discuss it then. Mr. Benman. Um, well, I, I guess I, I would withdraw my second if we're, because <laughs> I, if if they are not banned already, um, so I'm, I'm I didn't if there's a limit if we're saying we're not having any mass gatherings at a certain amount, great. But I, if if I'm just because I seconded that we were allowing mass gatherings, but I didn't. But that was because I had assumed when that we weren't at some point. Otherwise, but <laughs> so. I think it's more that you are agreeing not to have not to place any limitations. It's, you know, that's obviously. May I speak? We'll get you in the order. All right, thank you. Sorry about that, uh, Mr. Rio. Mr. Coat. I just saw um, Joe Terry was signaling to speak, so I want to give him time to address the body. Mr. Terry. Thank you. Uh, Alderperson Kubitschek, I think I can help um, maybe provide a little bit of background. I think it was shortly, shortly after Mayor Blazer was elected, um, we sat down and talked about his staff, uh, some department heads, um, about the, the mass gatherings and as it relates to city-owned property. And it was at that time uh, we had discussion about uh, the 4th of July and the, and the fireworks and whether it was appropriate not, not to prevent mass gatherings but on city property. Um, and Again, it was, and 
correct me if I'm wrong, what we, what we, the conclusion that we came to is that um, the guidelines by the county do not suggest that it's wise to have mass gatherings. And it's a suggestion. Um, and that if we had uh, you know, an application for a parade or an application for a large concert that was going to be on public property, that at this time we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't allow that. Um, and that, that was discussion. Mayor Blazer was looking for information. Um, the, the county's uh, website states currently there are no state or local orders that prohibit large public gatherings. However, the Wood County Health Department advises against large gatherings due to the COVID-19 pandemic and has confidence that event organizers will act in the best interest of the community and potential event attendees. Postponing an event to 2021 would be viewed as a reasonable and appropriate decision. Large gatherings of people in sustained close contact greatly increase the risk of spread for the COVID-19 virus. And these gatherings are especially challenging to meet the physical distancing and other prevention recommendations required to slow the spread of disease. Other high risk gatherings include contact type sporting events, graduation parties, weddings, and other types of larger private and public functions that encourage close contact and travel to and from an individual's home community. So that, hopefully that places a little bit of background. Um, and I think you know, this discussion is primarily about gatherings on, you know, if, if we're going to allow the rental of a city park for, you know, a, a concert or, you know, some other large type of event. So, so, Joe, I got a question for you then. Right now, as a citizen of Wisconsin Rapids, will I be able to go to the Park and Rec Department and rent the shelter at Robinson Park for the weekend? Yes. So I could go rent the shelter and I could have a family reunion with 200 people and Uncle Frank could come out from Seattle and... Sure. And if he has COVID-19, then for everyone else using the park, it's use the park at your own risk is basically what's being said. Yeah, I, I think as, as we discussed it, and, and Mayor Blazer can correct me if I'm wrong, um, what we were looking at, the only limitations that we were discussing was a, like a large public type event. For example, a concert or a parade, um, Fourth of July. You know that, that private events, and, and that was what your your uh, memo um, demonstrated to. You know, private events in the parks. Yeah, we, we would reserve the parks for those. That you you could rent a facility for that. Um, but what we were trying to do is prevent those those large gatherings that there's no control. Um, you know you you're going to do a private event that's that's totally different so that that's just a little bit of the background on on the discussions that that we had um what maybe a month ago yeah okay i appreciate the clarification anything further mr Koth? uh no not this time uh mr Catnow. thank you yeah i guess i have to agree with mr kubishek on this one this is confusing in the fact that the Wood County Health Department does have the authority over us to shut down events like this if need be. So I'm going to have to step back here and say that I think that as a city, we don't have anything in place to restrict these. So I don't feel that we need to vote on whether or not to open them. Are you going to withdraw your motion then? That's correct. Okay, I guess if there's nothing further to discuss. Oh, Mr. Real. Well, something I guess comes to mind with that, and, and I'm not looking at the yeah. uh, because I've, I've been trying to understand this whole thing here as we're talking about it, but mass gatherings, uh, Joe mentions uh, parades or something like that, but uh, there's talk of, or not talk of, but plan to have the fireworks yet. So um, 
I think that's what part of the, your discussions were about, something like that. Were they not? Because um, that'd be on public property and that, so. Correct. So just, uh, okay. I'm, I'm satisfied where we're at right now. <laughs> okay. Yes. Sounds good. If there's nothing further, we can move on to item six, which is adjournment. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Kubishak. I'll second. Uh, with the clerk, uh, I have a motion by Mr. Kubishak, second by Mr. Koth. All in favor, push your button, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Thank you for uh, participating this evening. And we are adjourned at 10.09.